Have you ever contemplated the deep significance of the events revealed in the book of Revelation? Today we venture into the trumpet judgments, a sequence of devastating incidents outlined in chapters 8, 9, and 11 of this apocalyptic book. We begin with the first trumpet judgment. Revelation 8 verse 7 declares the first angel sounded and hail and fire followed mingled with blood and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. Without a doubt, such an event is meant to gain the world's attention, but will they take notice? Regardless, this is only a preview of the events that are yet to unfold. Moving on to the second trumpet judgment, Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Imagine opening the tap on your faucet, only to have blood come out. It sounds like a scene out of a horror movie, but this is no movie and there will be no escape. Hearts will tremble for fear, but will they repent? Sadly, most will not. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became wormwood and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. The name wormwood translates to bitter and this bitterness overtakes a third of the world's water supply. I wonder, is it at least partly a reflection of the bitterness ruling men's hearts? Then the fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. In verse 13, it continues stating, And I looked, and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. The fifth trumpet judgment is described in great detail and paints a particularly grim picture. Yet this is just the first of the woes. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth. And to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth, and they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. These are no ordinary locusts, but symbolize demonic forces that inflict pain and suffering, yet without the power to kill. Notice that men will seek death, and yet somehow it will not be granted unto them. How will men who are willing, even desirous of death, seek and yet not find it?
Truly, these will be horrific times for those under the judgment of God. The final trumpet judgment appears later in chapter 11. A lot has occurred between the sixth and seventh trumpet. This may be addressed at a future date. For now, from Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. In conclusion, the trumpet judgments of Revelation are profound. Their impact will be felt by all. They tell of the divine judgment to come in response to humanity's sinful and wicked actions. It serves as a stark reminder of the power and authority of God Almighty. From the burning earth and sea turned to blood, through the bitter waters and celestial darkness, to the tormenting locusts and deadly angels, each trumpet sounds a warning and a promise of what is to come. These events, though shrouded in metaphor and symbolism, provoke deep thought about the nature of divine judgment, the consequences of human actions, and the ultimate destiny of the world. They remind us that while the trumpets may sound harsh, they are also a call to awareness and even repentance, urging us to reflect on our sinful choices and their imminent repercussions. While the text gives us a look into the stubbornness of the heart of man, it also clearly demonstrates the lengths to which our Creator and Redeemer will go in order to gain the attention of wayward humanity. While their hearts are hard, do not let yours be. Rather, turn to God now seeking mercy. If you need someone to pray with you, my email address is below. God bless and thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and to subscribe to my channel.